Good morning. morning. It's a blessed Palm Sunday to everyone. I get myself reconfigured here and welcome back to Bobby who welcomed us in a wonderful fashion. Good to see everyone. In prayers, Pastor Brad Danielson is still at Abbott. I got a note last night that he is supposed to be discharged today and Brenda's glad because he needs to go home to rest. Um, So he's been undergoing some tests and procedures through the week, so hopefully he'll be home this afternoon. Lyle Rood was hospitalized this past week at Abbott for some tests, and he too has been discharged and is worshiping this morning. Um, So his tests are on hold for now. Welcome back to Bobby, who is now up front where we can see her. And uh, the organ sounded really nice this morning. So thank you to Brenda and Linnea who have been filling in for her while she was recovering. Any other prayer updates? Things that we need to be aware of? But not seeing anything. Um, I believe the seventh and eighth grade confirmation class is meeting this week. The ninth graders are not. They will again next week. Um, Monday, Thursday, worship is at seven. There are three children that are going to, going to receive uh, First Holy Communion on Thursday evening in that service. Good Friday worship, 7 o'clock Friday evening. And then next Sunday morning, we have one service at 9 o'clock. We're live streaming it. We're video. 9 o'clock is our usual time. We'll just do that. And there's plenty of opportunities to see worship. The April newsletter should be in your mailbox. Yeah. You found it? Good. I haven't seen it yet, but I know it's finished. So um, no reading during church. You can read it when you go home. And I think it's up on the website already, too. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, it is. Good. Um, So the newsletter is out. We're still taking contributions for the food shelf. We always are, but through April 11th, these are matched. So um, it's that special matching program they do once a year. So they still have an extra need for the protein canned products like meat and beans uh, and paper and personal hygiene products. So if you've got anything extra that way, there's baskets in the narthex for those items. Um, The week after Easter, the ninth graders will be assembling school kits for Lutheran disaster relief. Um, If you can contribute any school supplies for them, um, you can leave them either downstairs in the teaching area for confirmation or up here on the big table. Um, They're going to be filling up some bags as well as finishing up some other service projects they've been working on. That's the week after Easter, so you still have a couple weeks to bring those things in. That is all I have in announcements. There's plenty of information in your newsletter and in your bulletin. Anyone have anything else they'd like to share? Seeing none, let's continue with the confession. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you 
all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn will divide into two parts. We'll sing the first three, two verses now with the refrain. According to Mark chapter 11, Jesus enters Jerusalem. While they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. And as they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed him them to take it. And they went and they took, brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You know, a year ago we didn't sing it here. I just, that thought hit me as we were singing so joyfully. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the first reading. The first reading today is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The image of the servant of God is one of the notable motifs in the book of Isaiah. Today's reading describes the mission of the servant whom early Christians associated with Jesus. Like Jesus, the servant does not strike back at his detractors, but trusts in God's steadfast love. The text begins. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen at those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore, helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Word of God, word of life. Our psalm today is Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. We'll read it responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Our second reading today 
is found in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God, even to the point of death. Following Christ's example, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. The text begins. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Devin is coming forward. You may be seated. We have a long gospel reading this morning, and I want to thank the Compromands. They will not be coming forward, but they've produced all of the pictures you're going to see. Um, each slide is another picture of the Passion Story. Each one actually is a poster that is two feet by three feet in size. I'm looking for a place to put them up somewhere in the church where you can really appreciate them. The, um, each slide has at least two pieces of scripture on it. So don't stress if you can't read the words on it because you have to be close to read some of them. And some of them have the scripture on the bottom and I cut it off when I scanned it so you won't necessarily see it. Some are very bold and you can read it so it's there. The other thing the artists did, and those in the back might see it and those in the front might not, is there are at least two pictures. These are the kind of slides. From a distance, you see it one way, and up close, you will see pictures that you can't see from a distance. They're really kind of amazing. Um, I sat in the last day and colored with the kids, and we had one slide. We couldn't figure out what it was, and somebody stood up across the room and held it up, and we could tell what the slide was then. So it was really kind of a a fun exercise, but it was a way to go through the passion narrative in a different way. <clears throat> in the past, we've had different readers from the congregation do it. I've asked Devin to read today, but remember, um, there's a list of youth that colored all of these, so each one is different. He's going to say the theme, which is at the top of each of the slides, so you can either enjoy the pictures and listen, or either way, it's fine, but you have the words in front of you. You ready? The Passion Narrative Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Matthew 26, 36-41 Sorrow Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass for me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake with me for one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus, betrayed by Judas, is arrested. Mark 14, 43-46 Betrayal Immediately, 
While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him and at once said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. Jesus is condemned. Luke 22, 66-71 Condemned When day came, the assembly of elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then he said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Jesus is denied by Peter. Matthew 26, 69-75 Denial Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You are also you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little, while the bystanders came up to the, and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore on oath, I do not know that man. At that moment the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Jesus is judged by Pilate. Mark 15, 1 through 5, and 15. Judgment. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consolation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of saying many of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Jesus is mocked and, then, and crowned with thorns. John 19, 1 through 3. Crowning. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of Jews, and striking him on the face. Jesus bears the cross. John 19, 6 and 15 through 17. Bearing. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Jesus is helped by Simon to carry the cross. Mark 15, 21. Helping. They compelled a passerby, who was coming in from the country, to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem, Luke 23, 27-31. Blessing. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. 
For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus is crucified. Luke 23, 33-34 Crucifixion When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus. There with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. Jesus promises the kingdom to the thief. Luke 23, 39 through 43. Promise. One of the criminals who were hanged there and kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus speaks to his mother and the disciples. John 19, 25 through 27. Care. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Jesus dies on the cross. Luke 23, 40, 44 through 46. Promise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Jesus is placed in the tomb. Matthew 27, 57 through 60. Darkness. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arithmia named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. The Gospel of the Lord.
Together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and for all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change, especially polluted water systems. Grant relief from natural disasters, especially we remember those affected by recent tornadoes, and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Jesus was handed over to the powers of the world, in all nations instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice, sustain soldiers, and guide those who command them, that they would serve those in the greatest need. <coughs> Hear us, O God. <coughs> On the cross, Jesus joined all those who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially we remember those on our prayer list. Christy Haybison, Lowell Trinabaugh, Jenny Perro, Jenna Dobner, Glenn Leaders, Gail Rybar, Becky Schleter, John Sylvester, Gary Holtgren, Jeff and Sonia Camps, Kevin Bierman, Dilshad Parani, Bradley Anderson, Ramona Evenson, Pastor Brad Danielson, and Lyle Rood. You hear us, O oh God. You call followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain hospice workers and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministry at times of death. Those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God. We praise you for the faith you have given to people in all times and all places. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and that with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. We entrust ourselves and all prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this point, we normally take the offering. The plates are still located in the center aisle, so if you'd like to drop off your offering there, um, you can still use the PayPal option on our website or the U.S. Postal Service, or you can drop it off at the church. But I do want to thank everyone for your faithful giving. Um, we've been able to keep up really well. So today for the uh, offering hymn, Bobby does not know this tune, and she asked that we maybe just speak the words in unison together. Um, I think it's the song of Simeon, but we'll just say this together. 
What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and then call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Apparently the meter changes so frequently it would be difficult to learn quickly, so we'll just say it. Let us pray together. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-saving Trinity, amen. Our closing hymn is God Love the World. The words will be on your screen or in your bulletin.
Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. Have a, amen. Have a good week, everyone. See you Thursday.